Hi, welcome to How To Repair. In this video, we're going to be dismantling a mini compact dishwasher. This dishwasher is manufactured by the Midia Group and is manufactured for many different makes of appliance company. This one is manufactured for Cookology. There is a whole list of different manufacturers that you can see on the screen that I know Midia actually manufacture for. These dishwashers are quite simple to come apart when you know how. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to dismantle the machine to gain access to all the components. I have another video showing you the full workshop manual, the wiring diagram, exploded diagrams of the machine like this. Also, the step-by-step -step procedure for testing individual components and error codes as well. But let's get on with the job. The first thing you need to do is disconnect the appliance from the electricity supply. Then you need to remove all the actual components from the inside. That's the actual tray. And we'll also remove the spray arm, which just clip fits. The filter, which twists and then lifts off. All these components I'm actually stripping off the machine because the printed circuit board has gone on this machine and it is brand new. It was a fault at manufacture and basically what I'm doing with this machine is dismantling it for its components to recycle the parts for other people. They will be available on the website. Okay, I'll be talking you through the individual error codes, but they are in the workshop manual while I strip the machine down and common faults that can occur with the machine. Uh, blockages in the system and not filling correctly are two of the faults, but one of the most common faults is the E4 error code. This means that the float switch in the base of the machine has been activated due to water getting in there. Now, the way you would access this is tilt the machine over, make sure the machine is drained down, and then we need to undo one screw at the top here. Now be very careful when taking this apart because you don't want to damage anything. Pull the black plastic lug that you took the screw out and slide it up. Then the cover will come away. You want to twist it all the way around, then bring it down so you can actually see the electrics in here. Now you can actually see the float switch. This just clips into place. And if you're careful and press down the tabs, the float switch will come away and there is the polystyrene that rises when there's water in the base. You will need to actually press the pins down to get these out as there are locking pins on the tabs for the electrical connections. That is a perfectly good float switch for someone and I'll put that with the polystyrene as well. Now we need to take the sides and the top of the machine off, but this exposes the heating element, the waste pump, which pumps the water out of the machine, and the main motor. Behind here is the circuit board and the water valve. So let me turn the machine back over. And the next thing we need to do is actually remove the top of the machine. To do this, you need to open the door, and I put my torch inside so you can see and up the back here is two screws, one on either side. Just undo these, keep them separate because they're stainless steel and they're designed that they won't rust. And there's one on the other side. Next, we need to remove this filter and just use a pair of pliers, open them up, put it in between the plastic and carefully just give it a twist. This will allow you to unscrew the filter, which actually holds the plastic in place. Now, carefully lifting the plastic up slightly to a small angle, like 10, 15 degrees, slide it backwards. This now will expose the top of the machine. To remove the side panel, there are two screws on the back and one screw at the top. And this is on both sides. Again, keep the screws separate unless you know where they go to. One at the top here. The panel will slide backwards slightly and come away. Do that on the other side. Okay, now we've got the machine stripped down to where we can access all the components on the machine. Let me just quickly explain the workshop manual. The workshop manual will give you all the wash cycles and it will tell you what it should be doing at any point in the machine. 
The machine will initially fill, water inlet valve will be activated and water will enter the machine. Uh, then it will go through a discharge, for example. It will wash for 10 seconds and then it will wash with the heater on uh, until a preset temperature of 69 degrees is reached, which is about 120 seconds. Uh, it will then do 300 seconds of a wash cycle and the charts tell you exactly what should be going on. Now, with the machine stripped down, you would be able to operate the machine if you are safe with electrics uh, to be able to understand if there is any problem problems with leakage or components. Now next we'll quickly go through the error codes. Uh, also the wash program sheet is on there and it tells you how much detergent to put in for each wash. For example, uh, glasses 6 grams, baby wear 6 grams, of course fruit and uh, Cold wash and hot wash on fruit wouldn't take any detergent. The intensive wash would be six grams and so on. It tells you the time it should take on each individual wash cycle and also the amount of liters used on each wash cycle plus the power consumption as well. But we have a test procedure for these machines to actually be able to go through the test mode on them and I won't read all this out for you because as you know this machine has got a blown circuit board so I can't actually initiate it but when we come to the error codes and let me briefly describe the error code and what you should be looking for E1 during the water inlet step if the flow meter can't be detected the defined water after four minutes or can't detect 30 pulse after 60 seconds the dishwasher will come up with E1 error code and it tells you what to check so let me turn the machine round for you and at the bottom here you can see an impeller this impeller rotates as the water is entering the machine and this tells the computer what should be happening. In other words, how much water is in the machine to allow it to go to the next step of washing and heating. So that's the E1 error code. E3 error code only appeared in the factory mode when the temperature can't be reached. The defined value after 30 minutes, the dishwasher warning E3. This is basically telling you to check the heating system, the thermistor and also the PCB. And as we know, the PCB is faulty on this machine. So let me turn the machine over for you. And at the bottom here, you can see the heating element. And the heating element has two screws or sorry, three screws. So I'll quickly undo these for you. This is the NTC sensor here. And on the workshop manual, you have a complete uh, diagram showing you what the reading should be in ohms uh, at a preset temperature. So I'm just trying to undo these three screws, just bear with me. have to pull the two wires off. Okay, here is the heating element and as you can see it's got two thermostats built into it and these should, of course should have continuity across them. Uh, you'll be able to check that with a meter and we will also be able to check the ohms reading with a meter. Okay, to check the heating element to make sure it's good, firstly you want to be checking the two thermostats. Now I've set the meter onto 2K range and going across, let me get my hands out the way for you, going across the heating element uh, on the one thermostat we have continuity on the other thermostat we have continuity. These thermostats I can't tell you what the predefined level of them is. Uh, you can't replace them as they are soldered onto the actual element itself. But if we test across here according to the manual we should have 70 ohms resistance. Remember my meter is not calibrated uh, recently so it's showing 69 ohms thereabouts and that is absolutely perfect. Uh, on these parts sometimes you will find a part number and I'm just looking around this at the moment and there is no part number actually defined on there but we do have a lot of these at the website available they are off uh, second-hand machines or new machines which have had a fault like this one has which is a PCB but that heating element is in perfect working condition 
Okay, to check the NTC sensor, I've set it on to 20k range on the ohms reading. And I can quickly just go into the back of here. We're roughly at a room temperature of 14 degrees. And as you can see, I've got uh, 1,590 ohms resistance. And I would be able to use that reading to go into the workshop manual to check if the temperature range and the reading is thereabouts at the correct temperature. If you took the NTC sensor off, you would be able to get an exact reading and make sure that it's going up or down as you warm the NTC sensor up. Right, E4 error code. This is to do with the float switch which I've uh, taken off. This is the anti-flood device. If any water gets into the base of the machine, then this anti-flood device can be activated and it would cause an error. And I'm going to show you just one example here because I did spot some water marks on this side. Uh, no, it was on the other side. And here you can see some white corrosion. This normally takes place when something is leaking or water is present on these actual connectors. So water may have been dripping or overflowing on this machine into the base. And this could have had an E4 error at some point. E6 and E7 error codes is basically saying you can only uh, test these in factory mode or test mode. Uh, but basically what it's telling you to check is the inlet water temperature. You should never fill this with warm water really. Uh, it should always be from the cold tap. It's telling you to check the thermistor and check the PCB as well. Uh, E9 is to do with the actual control panel which is actually built into the actual front here and it says check the buttons or change indicator PCB. It's usually a fault to do with the door PCB uh, and it will vary from machine to machine. EA error code is pointing you towards the steam generator and the steam generator is down the bottom here. I just turn the machine over and here you can see the steam generator. Um, there is no part number written on this, but as I said, with the workshop manual, you do get a full exploded diagram of the machine. Uh, no, it's not actually showing the steam generator on this diagram. Uh, so you will need to do a bit of research on this. I have a few, but I've only listed them two Pacific models, which are on the website. In other words, this is off a Cocology machine, and I'd have listed it for this Pacific model of machine. Uh, basically, the EA error code is t telling you to check for two thermostats. If it exceeds 140 degrees, it will basically go into an error mode, and it's telling us to check the heating element and steam generator, check the steam generator thermistor, which will be the two sensors on the bottom. So you will need to check all those. I can't tell you the values of them, sorry, because the workshop manual does not have that written in. But if it's saying exceeding 140 degrees, I notice there is a reset button on the bottom here on the bottom thermostat, which looks like one that you can just press in. If you look closely there, you can see that. ED error code is just saying communications is abnormal. Check buttons, check the control panel, check the PCB. Well, basically it's telling you to check all the connections on the machine. Now to gain access to the PCB, you will need to press a button at the top, press it down, and it's a bit fidgety, but the plastic cover will come away. Now on the workshop manual, uh, which is the other video, you will see all the wiring connections and where they go to, and also the configuration for the PCB as well, which may help you in repairing either the PCB or finding a replacement for this. Uh, there is no part number written on this one, which I can see clearly. Uh, there is a barcode of some type which I might have to investigate but I do know that this PCB is gone and it's not really worth my time messing around trying to find one uh, and because of the cost of the machine and it has got some marks on it and other bits and pieces. Right and finally in the workshop manual the last error code is EF. It basically states water tank level switch does not move only appeared in factory mode or test mode when wash tank level switch does not move after 180 seconds. Well, when you fill the tank up, this uh, sensor at the top measures the amount of water in here. So if you had, for example, inadequate water supply going into the machine, if you have it connected through to uh, mains or you are filling the tank from the top, 
uh, if this switch is not working correctly then this may be the problem and this is built into the water tank and I'm not going to rip that off but there is a connection point at the top here which you need to check that the switch is activating once it's got through to a certain level this then goes down to the circuit board so do check all your connections I hope you found this video informative. As I've said, all the parts from these machines that I'm dismantling will be available on the website. There is a detailed page on this type of machine with the workshop manual and a video to accompany it. I've put all the wiring diagrams, stomatic diagrams and exploded diagrams of the machine. But the last thing I would like to mention before finishing this video, on the machine you will see that a lot of components have got a scan reader and they've also got a part number written on them. For example, this tank has got a part number which is actually in the workshop manual and also if we turn the machine over and you look at things like the pump, you can see that there is a part number written on it and the motor also has a part number written on it. So if you can find the part number and match it up in our page on the website, it's great, you can replace the component. If you don't find a part number on there, you need to make sure that your Pacific model fits the part. That means you have to check the models that are listed on the part to make sure you are getting the correct component. I hope this video helped you. Thank you very much indeed for watching this video. And remember, you can always support the website by clicking on the Bipolar Beer page. Thanks again for watching.